So welcome to section 5.4 on finding A inverse, or finding the inverse matrix. And here we want to develop a method to find the inverse for an n by n matrix. Not just a 2 by 2, but any size n by n matrix. So you'll recall that we mentioned that if A is row equivalent to I, then A is invertible. So the method is going to hinge on this fact. And we also mentioned that the same sequence of elementary row operations that turn A into I, that same sequence will turn I into A inverse, I being the identity matrix. And so both these remarks, they allow us to write the method, or to give the method that we uh, place in this box. So let's read it together. Finding A inverse for an n by n matrix. First step is we create an n by 2n matrix AI. By 2n, well, we're simply going to copy the identity matrix, the n by n identity matrix, next to the matrix I. And that's going to create this matrix that I called AI. We're then going to use the Gauss-Jordan algorithm, or row reduction, to find the RREF, the reduced row echelon form, so not just uh, REF, but reduced row echelon form of that matrix. And then we're going to look at what we have, and we're going to take a look at the matrix, and if the first n columns have the identity matrix, then the last n columns will have A inverse. In other words, if A turns into I, then I will turn into A inverse. And the last statement is if that doesn't happen, if the first n columns do not contain i, then we can stop and we can say that a inverse doesn't exist, or that a is singular, which are equivalent statements. And we're going to see in an example how can that happen. How can it occur that a does not turn into i? So uh, let's apply the algorithm right away, the method, I should say, to finding the inverse of this 3 by 3 matrix. So let's start with the notation uh, that we just introduced, which was uh, the matrix AI. So all we mean by this matrix is simply to recopy A, 1, 1, 0, 3, 1, minus 1. And right next to it, I'm going to copy the 3 by 3 identity matrix. And so this will become a 3 by 6 matrix. We can put a vertical line here. It's optional, but it's a good idea. And we're going to proceed to use row reduction to uh, reduce this matrix to RREF. So you notice here we can uh, deviate from the algorithm a little bit. Instead of turning the minus 1 into 1 right away, let's use it to uh, get rid of the 1 and the 3 underneath. So row 2 plus row 1 becomes the new row 2, and row 3 plus 3 row 1 becomes the new row 3. And that will give us so row 1 is the one we're not changing, so let's recopy that one first. 1, 0, 0. And then 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And finally, 0, 1, minus 1, plus 3, 2, 3, 0, and 1. So that's our new matrix. So we're a little bit closer to our RREF. Uh, notice that we're going to have to turn that first entry into 1. And so minus, let me use red here, minus row 1 becomes our new row 1. Also notice that at the same time, we can do row 3 minus row 2 becomes a new row 3. So as long as operations don't interfere with each other, you can do them in the same step. And so row 1 becomes 1, 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0. Row 2 doesn't change, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And finally, row 3, 0, 0, 1, 2, minus 1, 1. So as you can see, we're very close to RREF. So remember the Gauss-Jordan algorithm, we have our leading ones. We worked all our way down the staircase, and now we can work our way back up to put zeros above each leading one. So the next operation will be row 2 minus row 3 becomes the new row 2 and row 1 plus row 3 becomes a new row 1. And so let's write what might be our final matrix. So notice the row that we're not changing is row 3, so let's write that one first. 2 minus 1, 1. 0, 1, 0. Negative 1. 2, negative 1. And 1, 0, 0. We're adding this time, so 1, negative 1, and 1. And this is our final matrix. How do we know that we're done? Well, what do we have on the left? 
you notice that on the left we have the identity matrix. And so whatever appears on the right, that will be the inverse, right? Because this is the matrix that in the procedure we labeled like this, right? Uh, and that allows me to, to state that the inverse matrix is the matrix that we got in the last three columns, which are 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 2, minus 1, 2, negative 1, 1. And that, we claim, is the inverse. So I'm not going to do it here, but it's always a good habit to check. Check that. So how do we check that it's the inverse? Well, if you multiply it by the original matrix, it should give i. Okay? And you can do that as an exercise to make sure that we have the correct matrix. And that is the...